This is Steve Williams from the Right Approach Consulting. I'm here today at American Standard Circuits, and today I've got Dave Lackey. He's the VP of Business Development, but he's also the resident expert on flex and rigid flex. Hey, Dave, how you doing? Good. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. And as a matter of fact, you guys published a book um, for designers, the Flex and Rigid Flex Fundamentals, right? And you're co-author of it. Correct. How's that going? How's that book being received? It's great. It's been out about probably a little over three years now, okay. and we've had tens of thousands of downloads um, on that book already. Great. That's great. Um, you guys have a variety of books out there, and that's just one of the many. Correct. Okay, great. So um, we're talking today about, about how to design and how to build for flex and bendable flex, right. right? So, I mean, the entire purpose of flex is for bending, right? Correct. So what's the difference between um, like dynamic flex and static flex when you get a design? Right. So uh, a dynamic flex is a, a flex board that typically gets bent only for installation. Okay. So it gets maneuvered around into a box somewhere and then it gets mounted into the, the hardware and, and it stays in place. Okay. It may have to come out once or twice for maybe some repairs or replacement or something like that of a component. And um, uh, so that, well, that that would be a static flex. Okay. Dynamic flex is a flex that's meant to continually flex. All right. So that could see thousands, millions of flexes. Uh, so the way they're designed have to be a little bit different. Um, things with the copper weights, the thickness right. of the flex, very important when you're talking about a a dynamic flex. So you need to understand the application before you even start the process. Correct. All right. All right. So the type of flex, I mean, you guys do this every day. What what markets typically use this type of product? A, a lot of uh, medical devices. Uh, oh, really? Typically, they're, uh, uh, and right now they're becoming very popular with wearables. Okay. Where you're wearing a medical device for okay. a long time and it has to conform to the body shape. Sure. So uh, you see that a lot in the medical industry. And things with smaller, um, I guess, devices, uh, Medical devices are now, they do a lot of portable things, so they, they're handheld devices, uh, they, they carry a lot of information, they use um, uh, Bluetooth technologies, okay. so, and because they have so much information and that they have to collect, they have to be smallly packaged, so there's a lot of flex boards in there. Oh, interesting, interesting. So, you know, I work with a lot of metal fab shops, and one of the things that's critical to them is calculating bend radiuses, and I imagine you guys have to do the same thing. Correct. So, and it's the way that's done with flex uh, in figuring out the capability of your radius is very dependent upon uh, how thick the flex is. Okay. So, if you have something that has to have a very tight radius bend, you would want to ensure that that flex is as thin as possible. Uh, single and double-sided flex, uh, minimum bend would be like three to 10 times the, the, the uh, thickness of the flex. Okay. As you get thicker or and you get into a rigid flex or multiple layers of flex, that, that radius has to be much larger. Okay, so what are some of the factors you have to take into consideration when figuring out what kind of a bend you need from a material standpoint? So you want to stick with something very thin, typically a one mil flex core. Okay. Uh, copper weights, you try to keep at half ounce uh, to one ounce. Uh, you don't want to go too thick because okay. you know the ductility of the copper is important. You don't want that to crack. Mm -hmm. And, and if, you're, if you have multiple layers of flex, uh, and it's not a pure flex package like a rigid flex, if it's possible to separate the layers, an unbonded flex it's called, okay. uh, that, that makes that more bendable than if they're all bonded together. Okay. And I would assume that the thicker the flex package, the less it bends? Correct. Correct. So there's a limit to, or there's a limit to the radius based on the thickness. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So there's also a, a type of flex. Um, uh, it's called a bookbinder flex. Okay. Uh, so what that is is basically each of the flex lengths between two rigid spans are a little bit longer than the one below it. Okay. So when you bend it, 
it, it has a very nice, forms a very nice arc. Versus if they were all together or all the same length, you tend to get a little bit of crinkling in there when you do that. Okay, so you've got, boy, that's a lot of math. And it, it is, it is. <laughs> it's very difficult to get it right. Uh, it's very costly, very hard to produce. So you don't see it a lot. Um, and most of the time, unless you've got some very unique hardware to fit it into, you okay. can get away without having to do that. Okay. Is there any kind of a limit on how many layers you can combine with like the rigid part of it or? Yeah, not at all. It, and no. again, it all depends on what you're mounting this into. Okay. I mean, every flex typically, like you said earlier, they have some pliability and we have done some that were very thick still, but they just had to make a slight bend, maybe uh, not even 90 degrees to fit in, into the box. Mm -hmm. um, so you can have quite a few layers okay. uh, to, to, to deal with. Uh, and again, like I said, depending on the hardware and the bend, when you're talking about flex to install, it's, it's not always so critical, but many times a, a rigid flex will do a 180 so you have a rigid board and it's mounted into the bottom of a box and then it's coming back around and another one's right on top of it okay. and then maybe even again. Oh, that's so <clears throat> so you got to keep the flex portion of that fairly thin to be able to accommodate that. Is there any kind of testing <clears throat> you do for like strength of the bend or anything? Or? Certainly. there's. <clears throat> you can send it out to a lab where they can take the, the flex, you can simulate the, the thickness and the bend. <clears throat> and they do an endurability test okay. where they basically just bend it and bend it until, it until it okay. fails. Okay. So you have an idea of how many cycles it will last. Wow, oh, okay. Now you talked earlier about like a, a rule of thumb for, was it single-sided flex? What about more layers, like multi-layers and additional flexes? Is there kind of a rule of thumb for like the bend radius and the thickness? Yeah, so if you took your thickness and you your minimum radius would be about for a... Uh, uh, a, a single-sided flex, say okay. <clears throat> three, three to seven uh, times the thickness. Okay. Okay. So let's say you had a a a, uh, a a very tight radius. The thinner, the better. Um, and there's formulas. It's in our book, actually. Okay. Uh, as you start adding layers, that that radius starts to increase. Sure. Um, and and you can't get flexibility out of it you may want. Okay. So that's critical. And if, if we saw something perhaps in a design up front and understanding what you're trying to do, sometimes they're on drawings, sometimes not, well, you know, the radius they're trying to apply, if it looks like it's going to be too tough to, to handle, um, you know, we would reach out and, and mention that. Okay. And when you said the thickness, it's the thickness of the, the combined flex layers? Correct. Like individual. Combined. Right, where okay. they're bending, yes. Yeah. So okay. if it's a rigid flex, you're not worried about the rigid portion, just the, the flex layers themselves um, in the package and how much they're going to bend. Now, let's say you had an eight layer rigid flex, uh, and layers one and eight are your rigid, and two through seven are all flex. Okay. And if you bond all two to seven together, they're not separated. You set three cores now all bonded together. Right. It's going to be very hard to bend. Okay. Even with the thinnest of flex, because you've got not just flex in there, you've got cover layer on the outside, and you've got some sort of uh, adhesive in the middle, um, where if you had those three layers belted, separated, mm -hmm. uh, you'll, it'll be more flexible. Okay. Okay. Um, and, and you mentioned earlier copper ductility. Do you have to order a special copper for this, or...? Now, all, almost all flex comes half ounce and greater okay. with rolled annealed copper, all right. meant to, to be pliable. All right. okay. uh, so the grain structure is such that it'll, it'll bend. Uh, when you get below that, typically you can only get that with electrodeposited copper. Mm -hmm. So you may have some flexibility to, to deal with uh, or, uh, in that flex, but you've got to be very careful because electroplated copper is, is brittle. Sure. Um, when you're dealing with pure flex that's plated, double-sided and up, uh, typically what should be done, and sometimes we have to go back to our customer on this, uh, again, depending on what they're looking for flexibility-wise, we will plate only the whole barrels. Um, it's 
So uh, just pad plate only. Okay. And we won't plate the circuitry because mm. that's brittle. And if you do that and then you go to bend, you're going to probably end up with some cracking. All right. A lot of stuff to start doing. Yeah, and it, it, it's all in that book. It, it talks about each and every one of these. Okay. It, it even has illustrations. And all right. So, you, I mean, there's, you're really not protecting any trade secrets. That no, it's very know. common. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. What's what's the uh, the largest amount of flex layers you guys have done? Uh, it was a rigid flex. We did 22 layers. Oh, my gosh. 22 layers. Wow. Um, now, Sometimes we, you can see a, a very high layer count board, but maybe only has a couple of layers of mm -hmm. flex in it. Okay. But uh, when you get in the higher layer counts, maybe 12 or more, it's not uncommon to see at least three layers of flex inside that package. Okay. And it's still, you're still dealing with two different material sets and different movements. So getting good registration inside the rigid part to line up with the flex part, it, it's got its challenges. So even though it's a high layer count, like the 22 layer, I believe had only three or four layers, cores of flex in okay. it as well. All right. Uh, interesting. Was that, like you can't share the customer, but what, what market sector? That was there? a military application. Military. Okay. Yes. All right. Great. Well, this has been incredibly enlightening, Dave. I appreciate your time. Sure. Um, this is you know, another one of the Bleeding Edge series, which you, know, you guys produce Bleeding Edge every day of the week. That's, that's what we're here for. All right, excellent. Well, again, Steve Williams from Track with Dave Lackey from American Standard Circuits, and thanks for watching.